All right, this is Brian Forster, and this is the world famous Giza Plateau. That is the city of Giza in the background. There is the Great Pyramid. And the Second Pyramid. Now, when you get your general ticket to explore the Giza Plateau, you get access to the exterior of some of these structures. But today, such as the Second Pyramid, but today we got special permission at the cost of about $2,000 for our group, that's why our tours are special, to actually go 200 feet below the Giza Plateau, into the bedrock, and into what is called the Osiris Shaft. It's only been open to the public for about two years. Before that, it was sealed shut and was only explored by senior academics. There are a number of massive shafts located in this area. Again, not really in the area where the general public are allowed. But if you do get special permission, which requires paperwork, you're allowed access to this, the Osiris Shaft, located beneath the causeway that runs up to the Second Pyramid. Now, as you can see, it's locked, and here are the officials opening the Osiris Shaft up for us. We have rented it for two hours, and here is Mo, our tour coordinator, supervising the whole thing. So you enter in sideways, and then the first level is 30 to 40 feet down, this very strong ladder, which thankfully has been put into place for those who have rented the Osiris shaft. So I got to go down first, and then here are our guests coming down after me explore this amazing ancient megalithic work. And here I am at level two. Level two is another 100 feet below the surface. So that's 130 to 140 feet below the surface of Giza. And in here are six chambers with two boxes. The boxes are made of dacite which is a stone not found in Egypt. And this one is covered with this mysterious black goo, which is presently being analyzed in a laboratory in Canada. So this is what these chambers look like. You can see tool marks that look like chisels, but they run parallel to one another. So probably machine marks would be the correct description of them. And the ceiling has this splat of the black goo right above one of the dayside boxes. Again, the black goo is presently being tested in Canada. And then inside another one of these chambers, you have a depression here, which would fit a human size, probably wooden sarcophagus. And finally, level three, which is another 60 feet down, making it a total of approximately 200 feet below the bedrock. And inside, you can see there's lots of water, and it's actually quite crystal clear. Unfortunately, we only had one flashlight. When I go back on tour in March of 2020, I'm going to bring a much more powerful flashlight with me in order to see more detail of this pool. There is a 40 to 60 ton box underwater in this location. And in March of 2020, I'm going to go with shorts and walk around in the water to see what else I can find. There you see the hook 
that was put into place in order to lift the lid off the giant box during excavations. And why they haven't cleaned out all of this garbage, I have no idea. So as I come up, other members of our group are going down to explore level number three, 200 plus feet below the surface of Giza. And now I'm up on level one. It's quite a large chamber, as you can see. You can also see lots of tool marks. Um, again, parallel chisels are what they look like. And highly, highly unlikely that this was done by hand. And officials call it the symbolic tomb of Osiris, which probably means that they have no idea who made it or when it was made. Clearly, it's a pre-dynastic construction and had to have been done utilizing machinery. The great thing about Egypt is other ancient locations uh, such as this are being open to the public, but only by special permission and at a relatively high cost. So if you want to see the Osiris shaft, I recommend that you join us in March of 2020. Now this is what uh, the top part of the shaft looks like. This is the metal cover on the surface of Giza. And while the others are still exploring underground, I thought I would take a walk around the outside to give you an idea of what the Giza Plateau looks like if you've never been there. That is the city of Giza in the background, which is separate from the city of Cairo. We have the third pyramid, second pyramid, and the great pyramid. And as stated before, there are numerous shafts in this general area off the beaten path from where most of the tourists go. You can see the tourists in the background. Since we rented this area for two hours, we were able to observe other anomalous things, such as the nu numerous shafts, which are very massive and go relatively deep into the earth. And here I am walking up to the Sphinx. The Sphinx, of course, is facing in the opposite direction. And then walking my way back, to the Osiris shaft once again. Our two hours are up, and so the officials are back, and they are in the process of locking the Osiris shaft once again until the next group of visitors arrive and pay the $2,000 plus fee. Sounds like a lot of money, but it's well worth the experience. So the final touches, the numerous locks being put back into place. This is my latest book about Egypt, Lost Ancient Technology, Volume 2, at Amazon.